everybody at home. It's Professor Pumpernickel again. <laughs> what is happening to me today? Where is my laboratory jacket? Well, I'm not in the laboratory, as you can tell. This is the traveling Pumpy Wagon. Yes, it's my home from home. It's my van that I go traveling around in when I visit your schools and Eureka and all those festivals we all meet at. Now, let me give you a little tour here. It's the Pumpernickel Wagon. And, uh, oh, look, a little sign there, yeah? And the adventure continues. This is the, the little wood-burning stove here. Keeps me nice and warm on a cold winter's night. And uh, there's the driving cab. There you go. There's the outside world. So, and down here, we have something else. It's a little clue as to what next week's video is going to be all about. Just have a little look down there. You can see... There are a couple of batteries, and these batteries are powered by the solar panel on top of the roof. A little bit like uh, my energy video when we took a grand tour of the uh, canal boat that I live on, yes? Well, these batteries power everything I need inside of this, uh, this traveling wagon here. It powers the fridge, it powers all the lights, and uh, it powers the music system. <laughs> So let's pop you over here because um, it's time for this week's video. And uh, as we're not in the laboratory today, I thought I might keep it nice and lighthearted and uh, tell you a few jokes. Some of Professor Pumpernickel's favorite science jokes. Uh, I've got a few of them here. And what do you know that science jokes also include a little learning as well? So, I'm making bad chemistry jokes because all of the good ones are gone. <laughs> Get it? Argon, argon gas. Oh, yeah. A lot of these jokes will generate what is commonly known as the groan. So, we'll start off with a little joke. Don't trust atoms. Why should you not trust atoms? Because they make up everything. <laughs> they make up everything. Atoms, they literally do make up everything. Uh, if I thought that was a really funny joke, I would say, he, 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 he. I'll show you how to write that down. He, 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 helium, helium, helium. Yes, it's another groaning joke. Groan. Uh, this is the, uh, the chemical symbol for helium. And all chemicals have their own symbols. And this is the one for helium. And you can make up jokes with chemical symbols. Let's try another one. This is one I made up myself. <laughs> sodium, 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 Batman. Let's give it a little tune. Sodium, 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 Batman. Or a little more easier on the tongue is na 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 Batman. Sodium, 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 sodium. Okay, that really was a groaner. Oxygen, hydrogen, sulfur, sodium, and phosphorus all walked into a pub. When they reached the bar. The bartender says, oh, snap. Yes, this is a real groaner, because this is how it's written out. Oh, snap. Perhaps they were all wearing the same shirt. Just to end on this one, it's super duper corny, this joke. In fact, it's so corny, I'm just going to hold up the piece of paper and let you work it out. Yeah, that's right. Cobalt, radon, and yttrium. And uh, you can create your own science jokes just by looking at the periodic table of elements and inventing some of your own words, some of your own jokes, some of your own phrases, just by using the chemical symbols that are usually letters. And sometimes some of them have two or three letters in the symbol. All right, so a few more jokes then. Before we get on to the real tongue-twisting challenge that Professor Pumpernickels has set himself. 
two chemists go into a restaurant. The first one says, I think I'll have a glass of H2O. The second one says, I think I'll have a glass of H2O too. He drank it and he died. Yes, if you've been watching my videos, you'll know that H2O is water, but H2O too is hydrogen peroxide. I think I'll have a glass of H2O too. <laughs> Okay, on to the next one. This is a bit of a riddle, but it's also a joke as well. If H2O is water and H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide, then what is H2O for? It's for washing. It's for drinking. <laughs> it's for pouring into the kettle and making a cup of tea. Here's one of my favorites. Little Willie was a chemist, but Little Willie was no more. What Willie thought was H2O was H2SO4! <laughs> H2SO4 is sulfuric acid. Don't want to be drinking that stuff. Have you heard the one about the chemist reading a book all about helium? The book was so good, he could not put it down. <laughs> it was all about helium. <laughs> helium floats. He couldn't put the book down. Why do chemists like nitrates so much because they're better than the day rates <laughs> what would you do to a dead chemistry teacher what would you do to a dead chemistry teacher yes you'd bury him bury him bury him bury him <laughs> i'll move on just nearly at the end now of course uh, as you'll be super glad to know Ah, I do like this one. Uh, you might have heard this phrase before. Is your glass half empty or is it half full? Well, the pessimist would say that his glass is half empty. The optimist would say that his glass is half full. But the chemist or the scientist would say that your glass is always full. It doesn't matter if it has no water in it. It's then full of vapor, full of air and oxygen. And even if you suck out all of the air and the oxygen and create a perfect vacuum, it's still going to be full of background radiation. So scientists are always optimists. A neutron walks into a bar and asks the bartender, how much for a glass of beer? The bartender turns to the neutron and says, for you, no charge. <laughs> yeah, that's a clever one. Work that one out. So, what should you guys do if you ever tell a joke which is related to science, but nobody ever laughs at it? If you ever tell a science joke and no one laughs, what do you do? You keep on telling it until you get a reaction! <laughs> <laughs> oh, these jokes. So, I'm going to the end of the jokes now because I think we may have had enough of these for, for now. Uh, so I would like to just apologize for not adding any more jokes to this list because I only update them periodically. <laughs> only update them pe periodically. <laughs> the periodic table of elements. <laughs> so I would like to finish on a real tongue twisting challenge. And uh, this is Professor Pumpernickel's challenge that he has set himself. Uh, this is one of my favorite songs of all time and I've never learned all of the words. I mean, I know what all the words are. They're all the elements of the periodic table. But to rhyme them off in such quick succession as Tom Lehrer does when he wrote this song in 1959, Tom Lehrer, really funny, intelligent guy. Uh, he wrote this song and boy, does he say it fast. But at the end, I will let you know why they're not all the periodic table elements. 
Din, 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 din. There's antimony and arsenic, aluminium, selenium, and hydrogen and oxygen, and nitrogen and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, zirconium, lutetium, vanadium, and yeah, lanthanum, and osmium, and astatine, and radium, and gold, protactinium, and indium, and gallium, and iodine, and thorium, and thulium, and thallium, there's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, and boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, the strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, bromine, lithium, beryllium, and barium, there's homium, and helium, and haftium, and erbium, and phosphorus, and francium, and fluorine, and terbium, and Manganese and mercury, molybdenum, and magnesium, and dysprosium, and scandium, and cerium, and cesium, and lead, praseodymium, and platinum, plutonium, and palladium, promethium, potassium, polonium, and tantalum, technetium, titanium, tellurium, and cadmium, and calcium, and chromium, and curium. There's sulfur, californium, and fermium, bacillium, and also mendelevium, and astinium, nobelium, and argon, krypton, neon, radon, zeon, zinc, and rhodium, and chlorine, carbon, cobalt, copper, tungsten, tin, and sodium. These are the only ones of which the news has come to Harvard. There many, maybe others, but they haven't been discovered. Hey! Oh, I almost got it. Someone's getting tired in there. Well, this is the Tom Lira song, The Elements. And uh, give it a listen. It's a great tune and a great way to learn the elements of the periodic table. However, since he published this song, 16 brand new ones have been discovered since then. And I believe there are perhaps hundreds or even thousands more chemical elements but we haven't managed to get our hands on any of these yet because they're not in the local vicinity to us i mean we're just floating around on this tiny ball around the sun so there was 102 in this song uh, 60 new ones that we've discovered I'm, I'm sure we'll go on to discover more but those 60 new ones since this song what are they put them in the comment section next to this video and we will choose a winner in the next week's video where I show you how to create all kinds of batteries with things lying around the house. Remember, 16 new chemicals in the comment section. I shall choose a winner. Until then, it's goodbye for now from Professor Pumpernickel.